John went off to work, leaving Mum in a sword fight with Devon. You were told when you got the sword you're not going to hit your brother. You're not getting it. Mum had confrontation with Devon. Stop kicking me. And they started to argue where Devon then became very angry. Sit down, Devon, now. Devon, when he throws his spit, he will do anything he can do to hurt me. You're not biting me. Mum was restraining Devon in what seemed like a headlock while he was clawing her like some madman. <laughs> believe what I was seeing. There was Lisa sitting there allowing all this abuse. <coughs> and he spits like a camel everywhere. Demetri's <laughs> mom like she's punching back. All you have to do is stop and let it be over with. Change your attitude and get back with our day. When Devon's temper finally calmed down, instead of Mum giving Devon discipline, she gave him the sword that kicked off the fight in the first place. If you hit anybody with the sword again, Devon, it's going to be taken away all day. You won't get it back until tomorrow. Do you understand? The Weinstein bedtime is a complete nightmare, full stop. Now, the first time that the child comes out of the room, I want you to say, it's bedtime, darling. OK? And usher them back upstairs and put them back into bed. The second time they come out, you say, it's bedtime. OK? The third time they get out of bed, you say nothing. What's important is not to reward the child with communication or fan the flames if they start kicking off. OK, low-key. Seven o'clock, Mum. Let's start bedtime routine. Lady, you're in for a shock because it's not going to fly. It will not work. OK, let's tuck him in. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Love you, Tina. Mm. Good night. I love you. Mom! Tina's down in her room! Bedtime, darling. Yeah. Bedtime. Just say she bedtime, darling. That. I got it's her. I got her. It's bedtime now. Turn it around. Bye-bye. What do you need? I just told David not to give the kid attention, and there he is switching the light on and off in confrontation with Tina. What are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Shut the light off. Uh, come in. Don't play that game with her. You're fanning into the flame straight away. That's what she wants. Straight away, you walk out the door, and she's guaranteed she's got your attention. This was going to be war. Tina was not going to let Mum and Dad off easy, that's for sure. I didn't give in. I just, I did what I was told to do. I just kept walking her to bed as much as I hated it. And I'll tell you, I'm not going to lie. I hated it. Come in, let's regroup. Regroup. This is what you need to do. Keep your tempers. OK? She's going to slap, punch. Tina's going to do what she can to make you guys do what you used to do, and let's have a fight with her. OK? She starts to slap, turn her around so that she hasn't got her arms to be slapping you. <laughs> Tina was just chaotic. She really was. She kept coming in and out, in and out. She started to swear. She slapped her mum and dad. She did everything she could possibly think to do. <laughs> Exhausting. It really was. I didn't like the plan that Joe put together for me to have to be nice. It was very hard. He's sleeping game. and Robert's sleeping and Kenny's sleeping. So it's just Tina. Just Tina.
After two long hours, we were waiting, but we heard nothing. You'd flipped the script completely. You've worked together. Yeah. You've supported one another. We can still smile. I know. Give me five, girl, I tell you. It certainly wasn't perfect, but it was a victory for Mum and Dad. Three kids in bed, one kid on the landing, who they will put in bed later. Well done. Hugs and promises yeah. about the tomorrow party. <laughs> when I first arrived, Mum needed to take Desiree to the shops to buy some clothes. Mummy has to do some errands. We're going to go shopping. And that's when I saw exactly how little Dad does to help his family. Can I go? Yes, no, Daddy's going to come. I'm He's going to help me babysit. That's girl shopping. Daddy's not going to girl shopping. So what happens with the kids then? He says I'm not going to stay with them, and he doesn't stay with them. So you'll take all of them? I'll take all of them. And that works for you, it's good? No, it doesn't work <laughs> at all because I can't get anything done because they're misbehaved. I can go. I think Dad's change of heart was to make an impression on me. Not working. Show you where your sneakers. They're right there. And then really what should have been a simple task, getting Shorty's shoes on, took forever. Are you joking? You don't want those sneakers? You want another pair of sneakers? How about these? You like these? These? It's, I don't know what's your problem with the way I tie. Cheryl, tie it. Hurry up, because I'm tired of this already. Come on. Are we in a hurry? There's a fire in here. We have to go somewhere. Mum did everything she could to get Shorty's shoes on, and Dad didn't even help. You don't like that. The sneakers on. After half an hour, Dad still didn't get up from the couch. Mum lost it. Just leave them. That's enough. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm not, I'm not going to put up with this anymore. I'm tired of this. Well. No shoes. No shoes? No shoes. So we got out the house, and then Shorty's kicking off because he doesn't want to sit in the car seat. I need to put on your seatbelt. Leave him, Gerald. Leave him. Get inside. Leave him. Leave him. Yeah, I'm gonna drive. You wanna go in the car? <laughs> don't tight. You don't like it. Did you just see that? It's ridiculous. Oh great. The door wide open and all. Let's let everyone in, shall we? We finally got to the shops because Mum needed to buy a dress for herself and Desiree. But trouble was brewing way before that because Elias didn't want to go. They'll get you. Hurry up and come inside. Hurry up, the police will get you. I just had to laugh. I mean, threatening your kids that the police are going to come. What a joke. They know that she's just barking empty threats. I mean, what's the point? Eventually, Elias did go into the store, but things just got worse for Mum and Dad because Shorty made up his mind that he still wasn't going to wear his shoes. <laughs> He was screaming, he was yelling, he was fighting, and I couldn't concentrate on, on picking out an outfit. <laughs> Just let me take him, Carol. No, 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 no. He's making a scene for me. Well, we're in a corner here, nobody's watching us. You can hear her from across the wall. Mum's sitting there in the shop going, this is not happening. Surely this is not happening. <laughs> Dad's become so mad that he's like, you're putting them shoes on. You gonna pee on yourself? <laughs> I don't care. Don't pee on yourself. Oh, my goodness. Voila. What? Now you got to go. The way he did on purpose. He peed on himself. Sure. I know. You're tired. I'm going to go pee. It's OK. <coughs> it's an accident, here. <coughs> it's an accident. <coughs> it's a Mum found so many excuses. Oh, he's tired. Oh, it was an accident. No, it wasn't. You need to step out of denial and deal with this. And as for Dad, he just walked away as if the mess on the floor had nothing to do with him. Can I, excuse me, excuse me? Gerald, who's cleaning that up? Your son's just peed on the floor. I'm, I'm sorry. I'll clean it up. Yeah, I'll I really clean don't up. think you should be cleaning that. I'm I'll sorry. Clean it up. Dad did clear up the pee, and then the whole family left the shop, but without Mum's dress. If this is just the beginning for me with this family, oh, I'm in for a ride, aren't I? <laughs> This family needs to set discipline and rules. 
So on my first day of teaching, I'm about to lay these down. The first one says no yelling or shouting. There's no need to raise your voice or yell because it can be very upsetting. Every household rule that gets broken, there's a consequence oh. for that. And if they refuse to listen and they carry on, then I want you to put them in that dining room, which is now going to be called the reflection room. The reflection room is a place where the girls can think about what they've done and why they're in there. If I behave like this, this is where I end up. That is setting firm boundaries. Last but not least, I brought out the princess chart for the family. Now, this chart is princesses' castles, and I've got these like special ones. What are they, little princesses? They are princesses, but you know what? It's Princess Gabby. Mm. Yes, oh my word, it's Princess Gabby. <laughs> it's Princess Gabby. Wow. When you show mummy and daddy that you behave yourself, you're going to jump up onto the pathway, okay? Until you reach the doors of the castle. Because when you reach the doors of the castle, you get to do something that you want to do. It's sissy stuff, that means it's baby. Come and talk to me if you've got something to say. So I'm not gonna talk to you across the kitchen, Megan. Megan had decided that she was too grown up for the princess chart and called it sissy. No. She wasn't having none of it. No. Right. Down. Megan pulled the um, crown off. Megan. Well, I think it's sissy stuff. Will that help? Megan. Princess reward chart was absolutely beautiful, but Megan didn't like it because it represented change. She didn't want to be involved. If you don't get it out of the bin, you're going to be in there. Me too. Go on then, in you go. Megan usually gets away with this kind of behaviour, but this time I told Paul to give her a warning. And when she didn't listen, she ended up in the reflection room. When you go into the room after a time, explain why you put her in there, OK? Yeah. And say to her, you want an apology? for that behaviour. And if she delivers a sorry that's angry, sorry, and she's really rude, so she'll know that's not good enough. I want an apology properly, which is sorry. If she doesn't, then she stays in there. OK. OK? Certainly someone like Megan is getting get an apology so she understands why. Because you, you, when you get the apology, you, you say to them, you understand why you're in a reflection room. The behaviour you're, you're showing is really unacceptable and I want an apology. Sorry. I want a heartfelt sorry, not right, just so a sorry. Uh, how does how will how will Megan know how to give you a heartfelt sorry unless you have to show her? Say to her, look, look at me and say I'm me, sorry. Look at me. So that she knows, otherwise she won't know. You need to look at me and say I'm sorry properly. Uh, as if you mean it. But I need it because I don't know. Megan, no. No, we don't hit. Yes, I do. Paul, Come on. Just She's not a member of the household, so I can do it. Follow through. Megan, start with your proper apology to me, and then we can go and get your glass of water, we can get the picture out of the bin, and then we can start again. You don't want the picture because it's this right, stuff. Right, right, that, that, wait a minute. That's led into, that's led into engaging in conversation. I want an apology for that behaviour. She's either going to say she's sorry or she's not. What was that, Paul, that she said? I don't know. She doesn't know, then she can sit in the reflection room and think yeah. about that next time. Okay? It's alright. It's okay, it's angry. This is this is Megan angry. Look. Angry. Look. This is Megan angry. But she needs to know boundaries. She was very aggressive towards Joe. I didn't expect that. Um, but then things things are changing big time in our house, so and that might that's very hard for an eight or nine year old to to come to terms with. My friend thinks you're a so do I. She's learning and, and she knows that she can't get away with that unacceptable behaviour anymore, that there's going to be a consequence. She's going to be in there all night, isn't she? When Megan's next nine minutes were up, Paul went in again to get his apology. Uh, no, Megan, I want an apology said nicely mm. now and I want you to look at me when you say it. I would say that she Megan. 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 Calm down, please. Calm yeah. down. Calm down and listen to Daddy, darling. Calm down and listen to Daddy. Not unless you get lost! Don't shout. I know you're, I know you're angry. 
I know you're angry, but listen to Daddy. Listen I'm gonna sit to down. Daddy. I'm gonna sit yeah. down. Listen to Daddy. I'm gonna sit down. Yeah, not you. Now get lost. Listen to Daddy. I'm here with Daddy. No, you're not. Cause you weren't here to begin with. Do you know why I'm here with Daddy? Cause I'm helping all of you. Cause well, I'm not care. really helping. You won't really will. Sit down. Look at me now. Look at, look at me, or we're going to be at back where we started, aren't we? Look at me and say sorry properly. She can be incredibly rude. She can be very aggressive, and unfortunately. I took the brunt of Megan's temper, but because it was the first time I was teaching that with Paul and with Denise, I felt it strongly that I should just ignore it. Throughout this course, if she does decide to hit me or, or bite me, I will be placing her in that room myself. Hello, come on in. And you had a little friend round to play, and it gave me a really good opportunity to watch him with other children around. They were drawing together and playing. It started off okay, but it very quickly led to his little friend running off crying to her parents. Andrew's behaviour got worse and he started to intimidate this poor little girl. Don't kill that! Don't, don't, don't kill that! Don't kill that! Don't kill that! Andrew! Hey! And you grabbed this little girl's face and he started pulling at her and she was so scared and it, it's this kind of behaviour that needs to stop. Next. Ten minutes later, he was acting up again. Andrew, you go to your room. That's not nice. Finally, Mum steps in and she takes Andrew for time out into his bedroom. What a place. It's where he sleeps and plays. I don't think it's a good idea to place any child in their bedroom for discipline. Three minutes. I'll be back. You, you think about it. I'll come back and get you. Andrew, I'm not going to... No, I'm not going to let go of the door till you sit down. When you're sitting down, I'll let go of the door. So how long could you be standing outside here? Half an hour. Holding that door. On and off. <laughs> Are you sitting down? Okay, I'll open it. You're sitting down? I'm sorry, you're not allowed to throw things. You're on timeout. I'll leave the door open, but don't come out. You want me to get dead? Then you stay in here. Ah, do not step out. Mom has got this timeout completely wrong. This is crazy. I'm, I'm going to do step number two with you because you're not listening. What's so step number two, Andrew? You hold them for four minutes. He's now being kissed and cuddled. At the same time, he's meant to be on discipline. So I wonder why Andrew's behaving the way he is. No, I don't you know. want to go. Then you can stay in here. No. No. So Mum has totally lost control of the discipline here. He's got too much control, and poor little Andrew doesn't even know what to do with it. Hey, heart attack boy, can you get up?